Tonight we have a very special guest, Greg Kreindler, who I have been following for a very long time, and it'll be fun to have this discussion today. We've actually never talked. I mean, we've talked on Twitter, but we've never jumped on a phone call. So super excited for tonight. Um, yeah, man. Say what's up to the crew. How's it going, everybody? <laughs> yeah. So um, we're going to get into uh, Greg's story. You know, you've been doing baseball cards for a long time and done some amazing stuff. Uh, love to talk about the Negro League stuff, um, all, all the work. So we'll get into that. Uh, and I definitely, you know, I'm, I'm pretty familiar with your body of work um, and what you've done, but I definitely want to let everyone else know. So we'll have a chance for you to kind of talk about your background oh, cool. uh, and talk a little bit about Project 2020. Um, Greg may or may not know it, but he's actually one of the reasons that I, that I like specifically was like seeking out to work with Tops, which is really cool. Really? <laughs> uh, yeah, man. You're a huge wow. inspiration. And in fact, like if you look at like, um, there's a, let's see. So there's an article in Beckett right now. I'll show you. I'll grab this real quick. So I, there's actually, it's the, I think you saw this on Twitter, yeah. right? Yeah, I saw the I cover. I've done a handful of interviews. This, this was one of the really cool ones. Um, I have to look through, but I think it even taught, I think I even, I know that I talk about you in several of the interviews, whether it was MLB.com, it might be in here, but like, yeah, I'm, I'm very vocal about like, I, I'd seen what you were doing in the baseball card world. And because of that, I literally like, I was doing one-off paintings for athletes and I was like, tops is where I need to be. Uh, you know, I loved what you, you were doing with them. And so, yeah, it's just, it was a huge inspiration. So that'll be fun to talk about, uh, we'll talk about some project 2020 stuff. And then I'd love to like hear, you know, what you're working on and, um, we'll go from there. Yeah. Sounds great, man. Wow. I can't believe, I can't believe I'm, kind of part of that that's wow you're, totally, you're, totally, you're a huge part of it man you're huge I, i'm part. honored thank you <laughs> yeah cool man well shoot I'll, so i'll let you take it away why don't you just tell uh the viewers kind of a little bit about your background um in the art world and then maybe in the sports world and then uh we'll go from there uh sure i'll i'll try to be not super circuitous but i, I have a problem doing that sometimes brevity is not not my thing good. um so uh, yeah, I, you know, I, I was uh, drawing, uh, you know, ever since I was a, a little kid, I guess, probably like you were, uh, and uh, fell in love with baseball because of my dad uh, and, and my mom, but more so my father. And, uh, you know, I, I, when, I, when I grew up, how, how old are you? You're younger than me, 35. I think, right? You're 35. Okay, so I'm 40, unfortunately. And uh, I... So I grew up like drawing cartoons, you know, like He Man and and like GI Joe stuff like that. And uh, when I was, you know, maybe five or six, I discovered my dad's baseball card collection, which uh, you know he was able to kind of save from you know the garbage dumps from uh, you know his mother's uh, cleaning or whatever. Yeah. And uh, he had a lot of like late forties, early fifties stuff because you know he's born in forty four, so like that's his wheelhouse. Uh, and as you know, as you know, and I'm sure the people uh, who follow you know, most of the cards back then were were illustrated. You know, you didn't really have photography except for you know a few sets, kind of like in the early '50s. Uh, and I I don't know if like something kind of clicked. Um, I, I guess it must have, but I, I kind of I like to think that I saw that stuff, and I'm like, okay, I I'm drawing. And, you know, these baseball cards are drawn, mm -hmm. so maybe I can do something like that. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't, it wasn't so much, you know, thinking about having it as a vocation. Uh, it was just kind of like something to focus on, I guess. Mm -hmm. So I, I kind of got into copying the baseball cards that my dad had. And, uh, you know, he grew up a Yankee fan and uh, Mickey Mantle is his favorite, uh, his favorite player. So... I figured, all right, well, let's start with Mickey Mantle. You know, he has a he has a Bowman Mantle rookie, which is you know beaten to hell, but it's you know has a lot of sentimental value, obviously. Uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I drew it for him, and, and he he really liked it. Um, I you know it probably looked horrible, and I'm sure he kind of was like, well, the likeness is not quite there, but um, <laughs> I just you know I did that for couple of years and I um, yeah I grew up I became a teen um, baseball fell a little bit out of favor and I, I kind of 
gravitated more towards like comics and uh, girls, but more like girls ignoring me. Sure. Um, I was way into girls ignoring me. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I, I, I ended up uh, going to uh, the School of Visual Arts in Manhattan uh, for college uh, with the intent of uh, becoming a, uh, a book illustrator for like specifically science fiction uh, fantasy stuff. Like, like graphic novels? Yeah, graphic novels or, uh, or just, you know, like paperbacks that you see in, uh, in the bookstore, like regular paperbacks. Uh, I just, I, I, I loved the imagery in it. I, I discovered that I, I wasn't like huge into reading. Um, so I think I just liked the, the visuals. And I think I, I realized soon when I was in school that it wasn't really for me. So I, uh, you know, I kind of, I just worked on my chops, I guess, and, you know, tried to become a better painter, a better artist, whatever. And, um, was floundering and eventually uh, did this project senior year when I, you know, I didn't know what the hell I was doing with myself and didn't know what I was going to do after art school. Uh, and uh, yeah, this, this project that the portfolio teacher uh, gave the class, it was just a simple, you know, illustrate a relationship. Uh, you know, you give simple uh, generic assignments like that. And we were kind of free to interpret, uh, interpretate them interpret interpret them yeah. any way that we uh, <laughs> any yeah. way that we uh, wanted to cool. uh, yeah so and i the first thing i thought of or whatever was baseball i don't know why mm -hmm. but that's what happened and i i did a painting uh of mickey mantle you know kind of again for my father and got really into you know the research aspect of it you know knew that mantle had to look like mantle uh and you know whatever ballpark it was in it had to be right it had to be historically accurate and i got like super duper carried away you know mantle stance had to be right you know what kind of bat was he using in this particular at bat was he wearing long sleeves crazy just crazy stuff yeah. and uh yeah i did it and it was a decent and it was a nice painting i guess and it was received kind of well and that was it like it was like okay I really like this. So let me do another one and another one and another one. And here I am, you know, 20, almost 20 years later and doing it. Yeah. <laughs> so. so how many, roughly, how many have you done? Because I know you have the ambitious goal of painting every player of all time, right? Pretty much. Yeah. That's, that's insane. I love that. Well, yeah. I mean, we're, you know, we're, we're sick. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, I love that. I love that. I think that's amazing. Yeah. So in, in those 20 years, how many, do you have any idea how many you think you've finished so far? So, so here's the deal. I, since I do, I do a lot of like uh, color studies, you know, like little small preparatory yeah. studies. That's kind of increased the number a lot because, you know, those are smaller and quicker. Sure. Uh, I'd say, I'd say in the, in that time, it's probably been about for five to 600 at this point, I think. Awesome. But, you know, but I look back at it or I look at it now and I'm like, five to 600, really, Greg? You couldn't do 1,200? You couldn't do 2,000? Look at Blake. Blake is like turning shit out. Like, <laughs> just bat, yeah. bat, 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 bat. Uh, you know, our process is different, man. I, I couldn't, I can't do what you do. It's amazing. Like, I, I will put up some photos for people like here in the middle, but it's just like, I mean, it looks like a photograph. And I love how, like, I love when you share your work that you have the, like, on this day, you know, 50 years ago, you know, so-and-so hit a home run to win the World Series. or You know, it's, you have always these cool factoids, I think, that, like, that I really appreciate. Um, I definitely have a, a lot of catching up to do in terms of my baseball history and baseball knowledge. So it's always fun uh, and cool to see those, uh, you know, the art paired with the fun facts, which I think that a lot of people appreciate. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I can't take full credit for that because that's, you know, the power of the internet just with being able to look that stuff up and reference it. <laughs> yeah, yeah but, absolutely. But it's cool to be able to, I guess, like take advantage of that because, you know, you have so many fans, uh, you have so many baseball fans who are so anal about that stuff. So, yeah, I think the kind of work that, that, that I do and you do and, you know, other, I guess, uh, other baseball artists has to kind of 
cater to them in a certain way not necessarily visually but it's got a you know it's got a hit on like some kind of nerve i think yeah it's awesome man well you i mean the moments you capture are just incredible and and like i said like i'm it's unfathomable to me to think about trying to take you know you're using what oils right yeah so yeah like i i never work in oils i, I don't have the patience for it but like just taking a paintbrush and making something literally look like a photograph like i've kind of <laughs> uh it, it just it's it's amazing i i didn't go to art school i always loved painting uh and now you know i've kind of gotten my groove and, and found my style but it's definitely uh it's not photorealistic by any means and, and i think it's fun like i get to put my own spin on stuff but like i know my own limitations and i cannot do what you do and it's just it's so incredible i love it, oh, I love it so much. thank you i i bet you could do it though i i because i can see even like the stencil work that you do i think your your understanding of it is there and i think you could do it yeah. i don't know if you want to do it but i think you could <laughs> yeah, yeah well like i said man i think like for me what's uh, like oils are fascinating in like, I like to try new things, but when I, th when I really think about like diving into oils and getting into it, like I just don't have the patience to wait for it to dry. Right. If the great thing about, you know, I'm using acrylics and spray paint is it dries very quickly. And typically like I usually, people ask like how long I spend on a painting and it varies from painting to painting, but in general, it's like anywhere from one day to one week. Right. And usually, unless it's like a very big complex painting, I don't spend more than a week on anything. Um, and part of that is by design because I just know, like I like to move, bounce around and do uh, a bunch of different things at one time and, and right. be on to the next thing. So yeah, I just, I mean, oils are, are awesome. Maybe someday I'll, I'll give it a shot, but if that happens, <laughs> I'm definitely going to hit you up for some pointers. Cause you Dude, have, I, you if I can, if I can help, I I'm happy to, I don't know if you want to listen to me, but <laughs> no, I can definitely yeah. spend nonsense. Yeah, but do you, yeah. you find that like, um, do you think that you're, uh, I guess, do you ever get uh, necessarily bored, not not bored with the subject, but you, you do you find that you need a break from, uh, you know, from something else so you jump into other stuff? Yeah, yeah, I mean, and like at any given time, well, Project 2020 is a little bit of, uh, it's, changing the way that I have my like production schedule because it's really based around these cards um, that I'm focusing on one at a time, finishing the card, submitting it. But outside of the project 2020, I usually have like five paintings in my studio all being worked on at the same time. And, and it's fun because I'll be doing, it's mostly athlete stuff and it might be like a couple football players, a baseball player and a basketball player. And like, I usually don't, I know you do like those color studies, uh, the smaller pieces, but I don't like typically plan any of my colors until literally I'm like ready to paint, like the stencils are cut, I'm ready to go. And so it's like, if I have five different things going at one time, they're all different athletes, different sports, I'll pick like a color palette and I'll make all those paintings kind of similar. So I'll paint them all okay. at once. So, like, so they'll end up going to different people. But like, then if you, if you look back at like my body of work, you'll see like chunks of like five paintings at a time across industries or sports, but they're all matching color palette because that day I was in the mood for pink. Uh, That's you know, cool. or, or which, which I think is fun. Um, yeah. Obviously the exception is like, you know, if I get commissioned work and they say, Hey, this is going to go in this room and I need it to be like blues or whatever, you know, obviously then I'll do whatever color scheme that the customer wants. But um, the most fun for me is like when people just commission a painting and they just give me the subject matter and nothing, they're like, just go for it. We trust okay. you. Pick the reference photograph, trust you on the colors trust you on everything. Um, that's like the most fun for me, you know, because then I get a lot of creative control. Yeah. You can yeah. do whatever you want. And it's like, you can, yeah, that it, it, it's the best. It, it's kind of, it's hard to, uh, it's kind of hard to unpack that for people who I guess aren't creative types, but when you're, when you're given kind of free reign, the carte blanche to do whatever you want, oh I God. mean, oh, it's the best. Yeah. <laughs> And it's great. So on the flip side of that too, like sometimes I will have very rigid structure, you know, of instructions to be like, it's gotta be this size and this picture and these colors and like very uh, kind of strict guidelines, which, you know, every client's different. And so typically I find that like when I end up with a project like that, I'll usually like kind of rebel and I'll do something totally different at the same time. That's like extra out there because it's like here I have all this control, like lack of control. And so I want to have like total freedom and flexibility over here. And so like, I've found that I've made like push my own boundaries to try new stuff and whether it's a new style or a new medium, 
and like some of my coolest like kind of experimental work has literally come at the exact same time when I've had this like very structured commission uh, project that I had to like you know stay within the lines and so over here I can like explore which is which has been really cool that's cool but yeah that, that's interesting because you have to kind of tighten up on one and you're following you know yeah. whatever set of rules and boundaries that you have and then you can kind of explore and, and learn with the other piece that's yeah. that's pretty cool that's that's yeah. kind of like what I do uh, in that like if I'm doing a commission it's kind of like you know they're this, this sounds kind of weird but they're you know they're they're after you to do your your thing whatever that thing is and and you don't want to deviate it deviate from it so much because you don't want to piss them off or at least i don't yeah. uh but they, then if you're working what they're expecting right exactly and yeah. and and then it's like on the other side if i have time to do anything for inventory it's like that's that's when you can play yeah. um you know stuff that i that i try to explore within you know my scope or whatever like that's yeah. when i can do it but I haven't yeah. really been too much of the inventory stuff lately, but it's uh, right. it's great when you can. Um, it, it's, yeah, I was going to ask to be my next question is I, I was curious what the balance is is like is most of what you're painting commissioned ahead of time? Uh, what's the mix of you know painting for yourself and what does that look like? Yeah, it's uh, I mean I'm I'm really lucky in that I'm booked out like for commissions for you're a beast. Uh, well. I mean, it, it's not even so much like a part of being prolific. It's kind of like, you know, the virus hit and it's like, I have two toddlers and life is just crazy. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I've been telling people uh, that the, the, the wait, you know, the wait time has been like two and a half to three years, which is, I don't even, you know, but they, yeah. some of them, some of them are okay with that because it also gives them like more time to, you know, Exactly. accumulate whatever funds yeah. they need yeah. I was gonna, uh, so do you are you collecting a deposit when they like reserve their spot yeah yeah so, i usually I, I do like a, a one-third um initial and then one-third when i'm about halfway through and then the final third final balance on uh, upon completion awesome. uh, but yeah most <laughs> of it most of it is commission work and it's like sometimes i need to break away from that and paint somebody that nobody gives a shit about i mean I give a shit, but <laughs> I talk to someone else. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and you can just say, we can skip this question if you want, but I would just be curious. Um, is, is your pricing structure based on the size of the painting? Yeah. And is it, uh, is that type of information? Is that like public on your website or is, or do they inquire and then get that information? Like, uh, and I'm just at, you know, I'm personally uh, interested in that because I'm, you know, navigating the life of a professional artist and, you know, I've tried to be really transparent with my pricing and it's based on size, but like, it's crazy that like, if I had a three year waiting list, it, I wouldn't even be able to know how to price my work three years from now. And that's tough. Yeah. Yeah. It's, think, you know, that even happens on a, you know, I'm, I've only been doing this for five years full time. And, okay. you know, the price typically every year, my prices go up a little bit. Right. Uh, and, and it's good. Cause then at the end of the year, it gives me an opportunity to reach out to the collectors and say, Hey, you know, coming up at the beginning of the year, prices are going to go up, you know, anywhere from like 10 to 20% or something. So if you want something, get it now, um, which has been great. But yeah, man, it's just, that would be really interesting to think about. Like, I mean, I have people now that Tops 2020 is blown up and I had quoted them a price, uh, you know, before the project blew up. And now they're like, yo, can I get that deal? And I'm like, I don't have the bandwidth to do it. And so like, same thing, like I have a waiting list. I haven't told, I haven't even told people the time of when I can start producing the commission work because I just don't know. But like personally as an artist, it's uh, something that I'm, uh, it's a challenge to me to think like, okay, well, you know, six months ago, I didn't know that it was, I was going to have this type of, um, I don't know, like I'm really lucky, like a, a good amount of reach and a lot of loyal fans. And like, I'm, right. I'm staying very busy, which is great. But like, I don't even know where to think even six months ahead to be like, well, how should I price stuff for the end of the year when I probably can start painting commissions again? I just don't, I don't even know where to start. Yeah, I mean, it's what's interesting about about your situation, and interesting in a good way, or at least I think it's a good way, is that, you know, you have Project 2020, which has been as successful as it is, and I think, you know, you're getting a lot of press, yep. which is great. So the way that I would usually think uh, as an artist, it's kind of, it's weird putting this, like, into words, but... Uh, 
I, I think that the more kind of press that you get, especially, you know, MLB, Beckett, it legitimizes you more. So it kind of legitimizes your price increase. Cool. Uh, so it's kind of like if you, you know, if you quote somebody X amount of dollars before 2020 happened and, you know, they sent you a deposit or whatever yep. and you'll, you'll get to their painting. It's like, you know, yeah, yeah I, I think honoring that is great, but if they, if they want something else, you know, later, your, yeah. your time is, I, I hate saying this because it's like, as an artist, it feels weird to even like sell your work and like get money for it, but yeah. your time is valuable. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's going to get more valuable. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, I mean, it, it's cool. Like in terms of the, you know, feeling weird selling your art, I feel very grateful because my journey to become a full-time artist was definitely not the traditional journey. I didn't go to art school. Uh, I studied economics at UC Davis went into marketing for almost oh, a decade. Wow. So I worked in like digital marketing for a long time for a wide variety of clients, selling all kinds of all kinds of things and services and apps and stuff on social media. And okay. so I had like a very a very good friend of mine, uh, Roy Steves is one of my mentors for the marketing side of things and just business in general. Um, and he just taught me really well of like, you know, how to be like data driven rather than like emotional driven in terms of running a business and understanding like, you know, why to make decisions and it being based on data rather than a gut feeling. So like I've actually always been super comfortable. Well, when I started painting full time, I was uncomfortable to sell my work at all because I just didn't think it was good enough yet. Right. To like it. And then, but once I became right, became comfortable with my work, started putting it out in the market. Like I've always treated it like a business. And like, to me, it's, you know, I have no problem parting my, with my work for dollars <laughs> and like, and, and it's fun. Like, I guess, you know, there are definitely times where I'm like, dang, if I had gone to art school and had more traditional training, like technically I might be a more complete artist, but I think that like the well-rounded experience that I got as a marketer and being able to like build a brand and like establish myself in, in the market is invaluable. And like, it's a skill that a lot of artists struggle with, whether it's the actual technical marketing side of things, or it's like you said, like the feeling of selling art and being a little bit weird about that because it is kind of this like personal, you know, uh, you're putting your heart on a canvas, right? And it's, you know, that can be hard to put a price tag on, but I'm very fortunate that like my experience has made it so that I'm happy to, happy to sell my work. Yeah. But you know what? I mean, what you just said, I, I you know, there, uh, there are a lot of artists who, who I'll talk to, I guess, you know, in the baseball realm, the idea of having a brand that, you know completely over their head it, it you you know you have a brand and you're conscious of that and that's great because so many artists aren't and the fact that you can kind of separate you know your emotions from your work and and whatnot is is wonderful um like i i'm i'm always like you know get the work out of here and you know obviously i love doing it and it's like you're paying me to play around on canvas and that's great uh, yeah and get the work out let's move on to the next one yeah uh, and it i think as an artist you or a successful artist um i mean successful you know right. successful or whatever yeah. Yeah. yeah it's like you have to you have to think like that um or at least you have to be aware of that uh it's it's weird because navigating navigating this world is as an artist it's so strange i mean especially especially for people like us because you're you know you're playing with with other people's ip you know and and you have certain things that you can do and certain things that you can't do and yep. you know you get to play you get to play in tops's backyard so like you have nice uh, you know you have a nice amount of stuff that you can do with them and that's great and some of that might not apply to your personal work but <laughs> Yeah, it's basically what I'm saying is that being an artist is, is crazy. <laughs> it is crazy. It is crazy. And yeah, but I mean, it's a good crazy. We're, we're lucky. So, yeah. so that that actually um, made me think in terms of the personal work, you know, and the IP working with brands and stuff. So, uh, do you ever do you paint stuff that's outside of baseball players, either for yourself or do people commission you to paint their dog, for example? Uh, no, no, no. Just yeah, like, I'll I'll do like I'll that. do other sports and like yeah. occasionally you know i'll do like a painting of like jerry garcia or something for a friend which 
is great, but I'm usually kind of in that, in that world where it's other people's IP. And that's kind of, that's kind of all I want to paint. You know, I, I never, I was never the, the type of person who, who needed, at least so far, never needed a break from baseball. Um, it's yeah, never like, Oh, I want to do a landscape or, Oh, I want to do a still life or whatever, or allegorical figure paintings or whatever. No, I mean, yeah. doing a personal painting for me is like, you know, like I said, painting somebody that no one cares about. Like I know I, from, you know, the Beckett thing, I, I think I read or heard that you're a, you're a big Maguire guy, right? Yeah. Okay. So in your, you're from the Bay area, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So like, you know, painting Mark McGuire would be awesome. Painting mm -hmm. Walt Weiss would be amazing. You know, like that's, that's the, that's the break, you yeah. know, instead of painting Babe Ruth or Lou Gehrig, not sure. that I don't like painting them. I right. love it, but right. getting, you Seems know, the break. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <They're awesome. laughs> like painting those guys is fun. Yeah. Yeah. What about, um, what about self portraits? You ever paint self portraits? I, I have, I haven't in a while. Um, I'm due for one. I did. Yeah. A couple, I was trying to do one a year when I first started, and I probably did it for three years. And now I'm in. I'm in the middle of year six, so I think I've missed a few. But I think uh, once it calms down, I would actually, you know, I, I think it's a fun way to like keep a person. You know, I'm not using someone else's IP. It's a picture of me, and like right. and it's a fun way to track my progression. I'd love to like it some someday have all of my self portraits, which maybe it sounds uh, self uh, centered. <laughs> to, like have like a room of them, but like. I would just love to see the evolution because it's like the one constant that like, you know, cause I actually didn't start out painting baseball players I, because of my experience in marketing. I was focused on painting art for offices. I always knew that I wanted a specialty. And okay. My contacts were like marketing agencies, PR firms uh, and so on. And so like, those were just the people I knew. So I'm like, Hey, I'm going to focus on, I make dope art for offices. And, uh, and that was really good for like uh, almost two years. And then I like, like it was really spontaneous and coincidental to meet this guy who had played professional football. He was a manager now and managed current players. He really liked my work. He helped me break in. I mean, it was literally his idea. He's like, yo, athletes will love your stuff. They've got the money for it. They're competitive. Uh, I've got some clients paint, paint a couple of them for free. I'll get them to promote you. And then their teammates are going to buy it. And it like totally took off. And like that moment changed my, the course of my art journey in like a total of 180. And it's just been like all sports ever since. That's cool. Which is cool. But the reason that I asked about like the dog thing, because I have like, I have three requests that I usually get for paintings. Number one is an athlete. And sometimes it's, you know, if it's a fan, it might be their favorite athlete or it's the athlete wanting a portrait of themselves. Right. Number two most popular request is a dog. And number three <laughs> is the baby. And it's funny uh... <laughs> dog come, there's way more dog requests than baby requests. <laughs> Those are the three things that people ask me to paint and it's in that order. And, and it's good for, you know, I like hearing that you are just focused on the baseball stuff because I'm finally at a point in my career where I would just kind of like to focus on the sports stuff and, and not be painting people's dogs. Um, you know, it's fun, fun to switch it up, but um, it doesn't really help build the brand like we talked about. Like the, my brand, you know, similar to yours is painting portraits of athletes. And I think that um, I want to spend as much time as I can continuing to build that brand rather than, you know, painting a dog, which I'm probably not going to put on even social media. They're going to enjoy it. They're going to love it, but it's not going to have the same, like, I guess, residual benefits to the brand building. Of course. I mean, do you, like, if I, there are some paintings that I've done uh, in the past 20 years that weren't baseball and that weren't, you know, related or whatever. And knowing that it wasn't something that I was going to show people or put on a website, it, it was a total slog to get the painting. Harder. Harder to yeah. paint. Yep. Yeah. Just, just getting it done. It's like the motivation, it's like the money. I, sure. Money's great. And, you know, like, I, like I've said, and you've said, it, it's, it's amazing to be paid to, you know, do something you love, but yep. I, I just, if I'm not into the, into the subject matter, I just, I can't, I can't enjoy it. And yeah. it's important. You know, I guess the older yeah. we get, it's like, you know, you got to spend more time on, on being, uh, you know, on being choosy about what you paint. <laughs> oh, totally. So I'm taking a picture. I want to promote the episode. Oh yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Nailed it. <laughs> um, um, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, so yes, yeah, I love to hear it, man. And, and it's so cool. Like seeing someone like you, that's like, 
I mean, you're where I want to be in 15 years. <laughs> when I've been doing this for 20 years, I want to have like, I feel like you are a legend in the athlete. Um, <laughs> which it's in my mind, man. I mean, wow. I it's amazing. <laughs> Allow the me. Stuff, the stuff that you did with the, with the museum recently, you raised a bunch of money. Um, you have that whole, right? I don't know how many pieces are in that exhibit. Like, that's a dream, dude. Yeah, well, I mean, that, that project was kind of like, that's like dream. That's a dream project, you know, cause it's really? basically, I did, um, it was 230 portraits, their color study size. Yeah. And, you know, most baseball fans have heard of no joke, like 10 of those people. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the dream. And, and I was lucky in that, you know, I had a, a client who I guess is more of a patron now okay. than a client who just yeah. had the vision uh it's it's more so his baby than it is mine but he commissioned yeah. all of these wow. and uh, it was to celebrate the the centennial of the formation of the negro national league yep. and it just kind of like he tried to make it coincide with the actual centennial which was in february and it was it was a lot of work over a couple of years but um wow. that, that's the stuff that you dream about that's i think exactly exactly man that's amazing so is that um so where is the museum and is the show still up? And if so, how long does it run? Because I would love to see it if uh, if timing and location permitted, like I would love to make a trip and see it. So yeah, well, about that. Well, so the museum, it's the uh, the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum in uh, Kansas City. Okay. Uh, it, it literally, I think, just opened back up yesterday. Wow. Uh, yeah, the show opened up. Uh, I think on Valentine's Day or the day before Valentine's Day. And as far as I know, it's going to be there until late July. Um, but I'm not sure. Sh- I, I would love, to, I would totally make a trip to see it. Well, I, I the museum, to. the museum itself, you know, totally worth the trip. It's, it's a great museum. It's small, but it's very, very intimate. Yeah. Um, also the barbecue there. Oh my goodness. Oh Yeah. Oh my goodness. That's awesome. It's something else. (laughs) But yeah, more importantly, the museum. (laughs) So, um, man, that's so cool. So is it like, do you have, how does it work? Is there like within the museum, do you have an entire room? Is it the whole museum is full of that 230 paintings? Is it a wing of the museum? Like how, what's it like? So here's the thing. So the museum, it, it's part of this larger building you have you have the museum on like the negro leagues museum on one side okay. and on the other side is i think the american jazz museum mm-hmm. uh, and you have kind of like a big lobby that separates the two okay. uh there's a side room that i guess the two of them use okay. uh, that's where all of the portraits are along with you know artifacts from the the guy who uh, who commissioned them yeah. so it's not I guess technically it's not in the actual walls of the museum because there's just a lot of work. Yes. Um, but it's, it's there. It's like one of the first things that you would see, you know, walking in. Um, oh, cool, man. It, it's, I mean, God, they're so, they're so wonderful there. Uh, Bob, yeah. the, uh, yeah. you know, the head of the museum. Did Such you go when they, when they did the opening around Valentine's Day? Do you, do you have like an opening reception and do like an artist talk or anything like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I went down there and, uh, and there was like a, a gala and, uh, you know, it's fancy. <laughs> and I, is, there somewhere, I, is there like a video online or anything of that that people could check out? We can link it down below this video. Uh, yeah, I can, I'll, I'll okay. send you a link. I, uh, it's not on my website yet because my website is in dire need of, uh, of re, uh, modeling. So I'm processing that completely. Uh, oh. my, my website issue is that I'm fragmented so much. I have like, I have like six different websites. Do you? I'm trying to consolidate it. Yeah. I just, um, I'm, it was kind of a strategy for a while, but now it's like, it's too much to manage. So I have like one, like for my prints, like reproductions, one is for my athlete portraits, proathletportraits.com. I have uh, during this the whole COVID situation, I started doing my art on puzzles. So I have blakespuzzles.com where I sell puzzles that people can do. And then once it's finished, they have like a cool piece of art if they want to frame it. That's um, cool. And then like, and then I have like blakejameson.com. I have, it's just, it's too much. And so, I'm also in the process of doing a remodel, web remodel. Fortunately, my dad 
is uh, is an awesome programmer and uh, web designer. So he's helping me with that, and we're consolidating it all into a new domain, which is going to be really exciting. It's just Blake dot art, and that's it. Which which I love because that's also great. like, and I'm sure like you probably have this too. Is like, I was running on blakejameson.com for so long, but people can't spell my last name. Yeah, and I'm sure that, you know it's it's great to build the personal brand, but it's also great to like be easily accessible and easily found by fans. So that was like part of the thinking of like consolidating it all into just Blake dot art. Um, That's I, really, I wanted Blake.com. Uh, it's owned by this guy. It's not being used. I've like reached out to him many times. I can't get a hold of him. So I don't know. Blake, yeah. <laughs> Blake the art is going to be the go-to. So that's but Well, I, I, yeah, I was, I was doing the same thing where, uh, you know, people have problems spelling both of my names. And so, you know, it's like you, you secure the, the uh, URLs for all the misspellings and have them redirect. But, uh, you know, for a while I was going to get, uh, baseballart.com because that's easy but uh the person who had it I, I don't think wants to sell it anymore but I, I i try to bug them uh you know once a year <laughs> yeah yeah no i feel you man i've been trying to get blake.com for years too baseball cart or baseballart.com would be that'd be a really good one see i love those like simple everyone you know says exactly what it is uh yeah that's really cool well there's so like there's a collector uh, of uh, actually, I don't even know if he's a collector anymore. He had a collection of memorabilia, sold it off. He's a uh, a songwriter out in uh, uh, Beverly Hills, I think. Uh, his name is Seth Swirsky. Okay. Uh, and he actually has Seth dot com. That's and sick. I'm like, how did you do that? Like, how did you? I, yeah. I mean, were you just in on it, like from the beginning of the internet, or? Yeah, it's crazy. So my dad was like in on the internet really early um you know he's uh works in that when in that sphere and like i mean he bought a lot of domains back in the day that he you know he thought were cool i wish you know i wish we'd gotten blake.com or he, his name's patrick patrick.com would have been a cool oh name. man um i came in you know a little bit later when by the time i like understood about buying domains i actually own tons of domains i buy them like it's a, it's a guilty pleasure of mine, but like, <laughs> obviously a lot, all the, all the super short, simple ones are all taken and now they're on the reseller market, like the secondary market and they're not cheap. So no. yeah. uh, like even Blake.art was not, not very cheap to acquire, uh, but I was able to secure that one. So that one's good. That's um, a good one. You know, it, it wasn't anything crazy, but it's definitely more than I've ever spent on a domain name. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. It's like you, you're dealing with so many other people, I guess, who want that domain name. And, and obviously the people who have them know that they can kind of charge whatever the hell they want, because yeah. that's, that's part of the game. Uh, yeah. But sometimes I guess you got to play the game. I, I think like in your yeah. case, I think it's worth it. So yeah, yeah I mean, don't feel bad about it. for me, like I look at it as like, it's an asset for the brand that, that I'll have forever, as long as I don't right. let it lapse, uh, which I've done in the past. I've lost domains because I, you know, didn't update my credit card or something on the hosting. But Anyways, um, yeah, that's awesome. So what is your website? Let's tell, is it, is it just your full name? Yeah, so yeah, it's uh, gregkreinler.com. Uh, Greg is G-R-A-I-G, Kreinler, K-R-E-I-N-D-L-E-R. Um, I, I mean, usually when I, when I tell people to, uh, <clears throat> to check out my stuff, I usually send them to like Twitter or, or Instagram or Facebook. Um, it, I'm just like... I'm on there more and I'm, I'm interacting with people. The other website, it's, it's weird. Uh, it, it's, I don't want to say that it comes off as cold, but it's, it's like certain clients, you kind of get a feeling that you would want to send them to say Twitter or Facebook rather than your website. And then, you know, certain other clients like, you know, the ones who are spending a lot of money, uh, you kind of send them to the website instead of Facebook. It's, it's weird, the kind of like mind games that you have to play. <laughs> yeah. Don't, but, totally. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm out there. If you can spell yeah. my name right or semi close to it, yeah. I think you do find me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think even like on Twitter, like if you just type in Greg, the way you spell it, I think you're, you're pop right up. Oh, okay. Um, I, I think okay. so. I don't know. Maybe it's just because I already follow you that as soon as I start typing your name, it'll just pop up. But oh, okay. um, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, 
curious on the art side, uh, again, this is literally just me kind of uh, uh, getting advice from someone that's done it for a long time. So do you, uh, do you work with a gallery or a gallerist? And uh, if, if so, or if not, like, do you recommend it? What are the benefits? Like I imagine in 20 years, you probably have in some capacity. Yeah, I mean, so, so I have, uh, I have an agent. Uh, he's, um, I'm not as involved with him as I used to be. Uh, I, I, we, we kind of hooked up in like 2007, uh, had like a, you know, a really good piece of, uh, marketing, uh, happened my way and like, or not marketing, uh, press, uh, happened and and that kind of like got us together. But, uh, he has a gallery in, uh, in Bronxville, uh, New York, which is, uh, kind of like by Yonkers. Um, it's kind of a hoity-toity neighborhood. Um, and most of the stuff kind of went through him. Uh, but now pretty much all kind of goes through me. Um, it, it, you know, it's hard, it's hard to say, it's hard to say, you know, what I would recommend. Um, you know, it, it's going to be different with each person. I think with you, and you, not recommending that you do anything, but like I think, I think that you, you kind of have to decide, I guess, what kind of, uh, like what your brand, not what your brand is, but what your brand is kind of catering to. So like, this is probably a better way to say it. So like I, I don't do reproductions um, for the most part. I, I've done them with uh, with people in the past, a long time ago, and and with this the Negro Leagues project, I'm doing them. But uh, but for my normal paintings, they're just one of ones, uh, and I I really try to cater uh, that stuff to more of the fine art crowd. Mm-hmm. Um, not that you know, not that I think any differently of them from the non fine art crowd, but that's that's kind of like also why i charge by the size uh you know for for each painting yeah. so i'm not yeah like i'm not you know how it is in the memorabilia world or or the card world it's like you know a card of of you know babe ruth or whatever is more expensive than a card of of joe schmo because it's babe yeah. ruth everyone wants babe ruth but i find that if 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 I priced my work out like that, then I would, then I'd be focusing more on the player and less on me and less on the art. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's important. The art is important. Um, And I think an agent is, is a good person to facilitate, I guess, whatever direction you want to kind of go in. Um, You know, as long as you guys are, on the same page, but right. it, it's, it's hard to find a, a good fit, I think. Um, and you know, as you, as you grow older, you, you change too, you know, you kind of want to do different things with your work and um, it, it's yeah. kind of like a weird symbiotic relationship. Yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah. Cool. And why I appreciate the insight. Yeah. It's been, uh, it's been interesting for a long, for a very long time. It was, uh, it was just a one man operation and doing it all myself. Um, I had, uh, now I have like the very, uh, fortunate position to be able to start building out a team. And so I've got like a publicist, uh, who's also kind of a business partner on some stuff. Um, another guy, Matt, who, uh, he just walked by, I actually would love if he pops in and says hello to you, but he and I are starting a podcast together. Oh, sweet. But he's also just been like an amazing, like very detail oriented, hardworking dude that is will put on whatever hat needs to be worn in the studio and help with like the production. Um, because I've never done stuff, you know, I'm signed, I signed, uh, I don't know, eight or 900 cards in the last four days. Um, That's what I saw or heard from, from the, uh, the webcast that I was listening to the other night. And I was like, wow, it's you're crazy. signed. So like right, literally right now, while we're in here talking, we're in like the office, that's kind of storage room, but my actual painting studios is like set up where there's Mark McGuire's everywhere that I have to go in and just, but it's great because like I'm finally at a point where like all I need to do is spend my time either painting or signing and, and oh, that's, that's the great. goal of the team and so like it's interesting as the team grows and um and the business grows thinking about you know the next uh 
the next roles and what you know what needs to be done and who's the best person to do them has been a been a fun you know fun challenge <laughs> but that, sure. i mean that that's like it's like you have you have a factory you know it's like it's the andy warhol factory it's it's yeah so i actually have uh so I have above this picture. oh there you go <laughs> and so there i actually go. have like um so on the back of my cards that I sign, I do like a little uh, UV light. I'll use uh, a little UV pen and I'll write like a co secret code on there, which for like authentication down the road. So like, right. because my autographs actually pretty, people could make my autograph really easily. It's just, oh yeah. So like I wanted to have that, but anyways, underneath that uh, painting, I wrote in black light pen, which you can't see unless you have a black light on, but it says like build a factory like Andy, uh, because it's literally like that's He's a huge inspiration on the brand I like I like his art but also like the brand building side of like he was he had a dialed in and uh, and like I totally. aspire to do something uh even remotely as cool as that uh, you're got. doing it I mean there we're getting there you, you have, have people who are you know who are doing the uh, I don't want to call it the grunt work but they're doing the grunt work and you yeah. get to you get to play you know that's that's yeah. and do stuff like this which is great I mean it's it's so cool how this project has just is has expanded my mind and, and my business and it's like brought people like you uh you know which i which like i said i've been aware of your work and followed your work for a very long time but like we'd never talked before and now we're having this awesome conversation and i'm sure it's right. going to be for so many uh also connecting me with this other artist gregory sif um who is an artist that i have looked up to for a very long time he's from la well he's from new york but he lives in la now um I just think that his work is phenomenal and he's part of the project. And so he's been on these streams a few times and he's oh, like that's a good friend of mine. Uh, and then some, some of the other artists, uh, F dot, uh, Sophia Chang, I've talked to her on one of these. Um, I've got a couple like Matt Taylor's coming up, JK five. I'm trying to get every single artist from project 2020 and, be, and beyond like, you know, like, like I said, you're a legend in the sports portrait world. So like, <laughs> these type of outside of like either painting or signing my autograph like getting to have these type of conversations is just so it's a it's a dream come true man oh well listen you're you're doing great work and you should be really proud of it i mean i i don't know i don't know what your plans are uh you know beyond 2020 or or how they're going to continue with 2020 but if you're i mean if you're talking with all these people you know uh, setting up a provided that uh tops are is cool with it you know setting up a gallery show yep. is like a you know like a no-brainer um yeah, for sure I, you know just talk to jeff and and see what he can do <laughs> yeah. no we've we've been it, and it's great too like jeff and i have a great relationship i think tops i mean like i said at the beginning of this call is like nobody knew how big this project was going to get and i think it really caught a lot of people off guard and in a good way uh especially with tops you know in office and so they're obviously very excited about uh all the attention the project's getting and the volume of of the print runs has been really good so i think that they're going to be really open-minded to doing a post 2020 art show which i think would be great good. i i envision it like a traveling art show where we hit a bunch of major cities and do like a tour and then oh yeah for a, a spell and people can come see and you know meet and greet with the artists uh i think would be so much fun and as much as i can do to help coordinate that or um you know leverage any relationships that i've built along the way to help tops make that happen i'm definitely going to do oh yeah absolutely i mean do you uh, I, I don't know about the other artists but do you uh have you kept the originals for the uh yeah good yeah i'll show good. you um i'll grab them real quick yeah so they're like a pretty decent size so i'm doing an 18 18 by 24, but I'm painting them on, uh, it's actually like foam core. It's like a foam. Oh, you're doing it on foam core. Okay. Yeah, which is, which is, which is great. So that like they're super portable. Um, eventually I will get them all framed, uh, which will definitely make them heavier and more delicate, but uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like this is the oh, one. Just, on the uh, yeah. um, How thick is the, uh, the board? Is it like half inch or inch? inch? Let's see here. Um, one half inch I guess. okay wow 20 by 30 by one half yeah okay it's, it's a decent yeah that, that's that's it's decent great. yeah well, actually i had like another a different jersey on him has had his team usa number oh the team usa number yeah 
I, yeah. had to, uh, I had to swap out the jersey, so I repainted this and just glued it on. So it's fun because like some of them are literally like you can just see like the layers. Anyways, it's a fun. That's great. I'm going to uh, be getting this frame and do something cool with them. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, and I'm sure I'm sure you're getting people, you know contacting you and asking to buy the originals i imagine yeah and, and it's in my tops contract that i can't sell them i can't actually use them for any commercial purposes without tops written consent but right. they've said that they're open-minded to, to promoting you know tops with them at the end so that's good you know, I, it, well, it's good because it, it makes it easier to tell people no they can't buy the original i mean you know everyone's got the story i grew up idolizing you know clemente and you know i have this great story with my dad which i can relate to i have the same thing with mark mcguire um you know everyone's got the reason why they just have to have the painting and whatever it takes and i'm just like sorry can't do it in my contract it's contract yeah and, and so that's good in that case it's like a nice protection because i do want to keep them and like I don't know. I'm like a, a sensitive, uh, empathetic guy that like, if people tell me a story and, and I like, I want to help them and I want to get them the art, you know, if they really, it means something so much to them, but this is good because it just makes it a simple decision of all the originals stay together. Yeah. That, that's kind of, it's like, Oh, you know, talk to my agent, <laughs> you know, they yeah. handle the business side so that that's like the equivalent. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, what I, I think the best thing about the project, um, you know, just coming from like a, an outsider perspective who I guess was just in it, you know, in a different project last year, just seeing, seeing the different kind of art that all you guys are doing and gals, well, gal, it, is Sophia the only girl? Yeah. Um, just seeing that kind of art and it's, a lot of it is so different from what I think card collectors are, you know, yeah. are familiar with. I mean, you you guys are bringing like, you know, like, hip hop and like yeah. you know, graffiti like to it like that's amazing and the best part about it coming from like the artist point of view i think is i mean i you can edit this out if you have to but the fact that uh the fact that you guys get royalties because right. they don't they didn't do that like that this is like the first time they've ever done anything like that wow uh, didn't know that's that. you know, i know tyson beck had designed a lot He'd worked for Tops for a long time, and he said it's the first time he ever ever gotten royalties on card sales. Yeah, that was that's a big point with them. I mean, like last year when I was talking with Jeff, I hope he doesn't yeah. you know listen to this. Not, he <laughs> does. Of... Well, he's actually going to be a guest on Tuesday too. Oh, shit. Anyway, <laughs> assume that Jeff is listening. Well, part of the yeah, like part of the the contract thing that I was trying to like work into it was that you know was that. Uh, I could get royalties, even if it's just like a small little smidgen. But yeah. what you guys that is great. And it's yeah. so, so deserved. I mean, especially since you guys are like the biggest champions for this. Because Tops, you know, Tops has their platform and they have social media and everything. But you guys are coming in with your own fan base and you guys yeah. are doing all the legwork. So yeah. you deserve that percentage. No, it's it's great. You're absolutely right. I think that we're we're very lucky to have a royalty. Um, and, you know, I've done some licensing stuff in the past with other brands, non-sports stuff, where I was getting a very small royalty, but I think that Tops is a, it's a fair number, and especially with the print runs that we're doing, where obviously we're incentivized to sell more uh, copies of the card, then we, we get more money, uh, which helps make more art, and that's the most important thing, um, but, you know, I think that when Tops uh, put that number down on the paper for us, they weren't thinking the print runs are going to be where they're at now. Now, it doesn't matter because we're, I mean, Tops is just making a killing because obviously oh, yeah. they're getting the lion's share and they're making, you know, it's it's millions of dollars, which is yeah. insane. Yeah, millions yeah, of it's dollars. Just, it's, it's so cool. Like, it's funny because thinking coming into this, like, I legitimately, like, my expectation was um, if a card wasn't, if an underperforming card might sell 200 copies and a, and a very good performing card might sell 2,000. That's kind of in my head. I was like, all right, we're going to be 200 to 2000. And I knew, you know, I know what my royalty is. And I was like, okay, well, you know, it's enough to like keep buying my art supplies and I can pay my studio rent. And, uh, you know, I have a job for the rest of the year, which is, which is also like such a yeah. special thing to have, you know, during yeah. all this uncertainty. And that was like where I was at. And now obviously we're at, a, we're at ex quite a bit bigger numbers than that. And, you know, I'm in a, I'm in a very fortunate position where I'm being able to uh, continue to kind of build my team and like take care of them really well and like find the right people that are supporting me which has been amazing and you know this space that we're in right now 
I didn't used to rent this. This is a second, this was my, now my second studio. Uh, so that we have like this room, there's no painting happening in this room. So everything that needs to stay clean stays in this room. Everything in the other room is literally, it's like walk in at your own risk. You're going to get paint on you if you come in that room. <laughs> that's the dream, man. Yeah. <laughs> that's the dream. Yeah. That is, that's great. I, yeah. I'm just, I'm so happy for, for you guys. Like I, it's so awesome that this has taken off and it's so great that, that people have responded to it the way that they yeah. have. I mean, yeah. Hey, this is, this is insane. Um, <laughs> Oh, it's so funny that I'm ending the call like this. Uh, I actually have to jump on another call with Ricky Henderson and his people. Because <laughs> we're going to do like potential, we're talking about some doing some dual autos on my Ricky card. Um, I forgot that that call was actually right now. And I've, I've loved this. Like we, we've been talking for like an hour and like, it feels like it just flew by. So uh, I do have to jump off this, but I think people are going to love this episode. Um, I want you to like shout out, you know, your website again, or if whatever you want to promote, like your Twitter, any of those and then we'll close it out and i'll jump on this call <laughs> all right before i do that that was the most baller flex i've ever seen <laughs> i was like yeah you just text me i love it <laughs> yeah go for it tell the people i gotta call it yeah <laughs> yeah so if any of you guys want to check out my artwork uh you can find me uh go on twitter uh greg uh kreinler g-r-a-i-g-k-r-e-i-n-d-l-e-r um, and yeah, I mean, Blake, I'm really glad we got to talk. I, I think that your next call is more important, but, uh, yeah, they're all important. I, I hope we can do it again. And oh, I really, I'm in Brooklyn. I mean, granted, you know, this COVID thing has screwed everything up, but when I get back yep. and things get kind of normal, I'd love to come on by okay. if I'm allowed to. You you can come by anytime you want, man. Just Sweet. be ready to get paint all over you if we go in the painting room, but yeah, Fine, man, it'd be so much fun and you're welcome anytime open Thank door for you. you and you're i mean i mean it dude you're such a big inspiration and and a, a bigger part of me being involved in project 2020 than you probably will ever understand but i i don't forget it and i really appreciate you and i think you're you're a legend wow well thank you i can't agree but thank you, <laughs> thank you. i appreciate it all right man well we'll catch you next time everyone else stay awesome all right take care guys